Welcome back to the Skid Factory, where today we're starting our 2019 Drag Week project. We're starting with a Fox Body Mustang. This particular one's owned by Jason at Tough Mounts. Um, we're actually using this car as a preliminary uh, mock-up or setup car. This isn't actually the car we're gonna use. Um, so we're doing all of our fabrication on this car to save time later. We're actually shipping all of our fabricated parts to the US. So we're down in filthy weather Melbourne uh, at MPW Performance. So kindly allowed us to use the workshop to do this do this work. Jason's car's here getting worked on uh, for other things, so we've got a good mock-up. Uh, these vehicles are really common in the States. Drag car central, they got they are perfectly set up to make a, a good budget drag car and very effective. Uh, they usually have small block Fords or uh, LSs in them, uh, turbos, NA, nitrous, anything you can think of. But that's not what we're gonna do because we're gonna do it Aussie style. The barrel looks pretty at home in this bay. Uh, obviously, it's already mounted up. Jason's makes actually a kit for the Mustang. So we're using the same mounts, the same cross member, the same transmission in our actual car that we're building also. And by doing it that way, it ensures that nothing's gonna be in a different spot. So that guarantees all the fabrication we're putting the time and effort into here is gonna fit the car that's actually halfway around the world right now, so. That looks right at home in there, eh? It fits in really well. Like it's, it's just happy. Like it doesn't doesn't hit the bonnet. The bonnet's had one rib cut out of it, which is actually very similar to how we did the Cresta. But apart from that, it's very basic conversion. It's still got original tunnel. Um, this particular car uses a tubular cross member, but Jason actually made the mounts based on the original um, pressed steel cross member before this tube cross member was put in, because this is actually a small block Ford. Uh, tube cross member. There's also heaps and heaps of bolt-in cross members to suit LS conversions for these because they're just so popular. Um, yeah, most of the drag sort of orientated Fox bodies these days have got turbo iron block or alloy LSs in them. Um, so there's just so much aftermarket support for that kind of LS based conversion. But there's already a few Fox body and other Mustang based platform conversions going on in the States right now. Um, we speak to a couple of guys over there pretty regularly about Barra staff and Mustangs in general. So it's cool to see the little Aussie engine that could get a bit of uh, international notoriety. And there's two Barras at Drag Week this year, or maybe is there three? Uh, I believe there's actually gonna be three Barras at, at uh, Drag Week this year, two Mustangs and a Cresta, so. It's and gonna all be with pretty cool. Parts too, yeah? uh, well, the Cresta and this the is Cresta and the Cresta and our Mustang are actually gonna be basically carbon copies of each other. So same hypertune exhaust manifold, same turbo, same hypertune inlet manifold, same hypertune cooler, uh, both running Haltech Elites, both running Hughes Turbo 400. So the idea basically behind that is that if something goes wrong, not that we're trying to run two cars off one set of spares, but if something goes wrong, potentially we can rob parts from one car just to be able to do a pass on the other car or... It, it basically... Because we're taking an engine that's totally unknown and unsupported in America, it gives us more options to be able to try and keep both of the cars running. Um, I mean, touch wood this year we have as good of a year as we did last year with no real mechanical dramas, but drag week's such an unknown, you just have to prepare for the worst. You can't just pop down to Repco and grab yourself an alternator or something, eh? Yeah, there's no, there's no Repco in America, unfortunately. What so, are the pet boys, no? Uh, they, man, there's all sorts of stuff. Napa. 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 Napa's probably Repco's American counterpart. Um, so drag week aside, Alan, heading back to the States, what are you most excited about, dude? Um, going to the Hacienda Mexican restaurant. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay, Benny, you want some Mexican? Uh, I'm always down for Mexican. Yeah, all right. I'm excited about big, like having a large lemon squash can that's a normal regular size. I just want to go and see the homies again. Yeah, actually true. I just want to see all the Charleston performance homies. Those yep. guys are rad. Yep. And giving Keith a high five. Yeah, high fives daily for Keith. <laughs> 
Let's crack on. Cracking into it. Let's get in. So we haven't actually talked about what's happening, Benny. What's where? What have you got to do? And so this week, cetera. this week's a bit of a build. Um, basically, we want to get all of our inner cooler piping and the cooler mounted and mocked up. We want to be able to make like a bolt-in bracket so we can take all that bracketry with us. Uh, want to do uh, all of our wiring harness. So we've already got a, a Haltech Elite uh, terminated loom for the barra. So there's going to be a few things we're going to have to add and change, uh, like we're not running Ford OEM style ignition cores. So we have to delete the IGN6 igniter that's wired factory into the loom. Uh, we're actually going with R35 GTR coils. So they, they bolt in to the FG rocker cover. There's a few little mods you have to do, but they go in pretty well. Um, the benefit of those obviously is internal igniter. They're nice and compact. So while the IGN 1A coils are really good and have a lot of spark, they're quite bulky, um, and the Cresta's base specifically is quite busy anyway. So being that we're trying to replicate the Cresta as closely as possible, we're just gonna run with the 35 GTR coils again. Um, that just simplifies stuff. And even to the fact that we're even gonna try and use the Cresta's tune in the Mustang and just give it a bit of a tweak just to keep it safe. But yeah, trying to the goal is to try and replicate the Cresta mechanically as close as possible and just kind of bounce it between the two cars. And it also, it's more efficient that way too. So we already know we can make uh, like turbo oil drains the same, turbo oil feeds are the same. Um, our fuel rail plumbing is gonna be very similar. So I've actually, before we shipped the Cresta, actually made a massive list of every single AN fitting in the car. So I can more or less spec the car without even having it. Um, so I'm about to do a massive big AN order. Um, the fuel tank's gonna be exactly the same. The Fox body we've got in the States already has a fuel cell in it, but we are actually going to fit the exact same fuel cell as to what's in the Cresta, so we can still do our staged uh, fuel pumps, and that's all inside the tank, because at the moment our Fox body's actually got a carbide engine in it, so there's no um, provision for an air fire pump. Um, the fuel lines are probably too small because it's, it's an aspirated small block car, so we're going to run dash 10 supply, dash 8 return the same as a Cresta, and just keep it exactly the same just for consistency so you got this all prepared Benny mate I've spent a lot of time trying to nut this out and and try and uh, minimize any potential issues so Alan's over here smiling because he, he has organized his build I was just thinking that you spent a lot of time nutting things out as well oh god dang keep it PG bro <laughs> That heavy? It's heavy, but it's worth it.
That fits way better than it should. Very flat. Any matches, Alan? Uh, this one without a cap, which is V6. Quick update, we're um, fitting a radiator as required. Uh, we prefer to use factory radiators rather than aftermarket stuff with, also with factory fans. Um, they just work and they work better than most aftermarket stuff, so that's what we're going to use. Fortunately for us, we've got a huge opening in this. Uh, it's about 800 by 500 mil. That's ample for a modern radiator. So we were thinking about using a uh, Falcon radiator, uh, but this, this is virtually a Commodore workshop, so um, they're the enemy. So we wandered around and found a VE radiator just uh, on the shelf that's been replaced by an aftermarket one and um, threw it in and it fits really well. So um, even the bottom radiator hose fits. So we're um, celebrating. We're gonna go to the wreckers and get one for ourselves just to do our fab work with fans on it and um, mount it all up. We'll probably mount one up for Jason as well so just to help him out, thank him for working using his car and take some new stuff over to uh, the other car. Where are we going, Benny? We're currently gonna go to the wreckers if we ever get a green light. <clears throat> We're gonna go and get a Commodore V6 VE radiator. Apparently there's two different ones, so I'm sure they'll tell us what the differences are. The guy asked me what year our Commodore was on the phone, and I said, we're not putting it in a Commodore, and he said, but what year is it? He didn't quite understand what we're doing. Did he ask you for a VIN number? He didn't ask me for a VIN number, luckily. Would have started with a one, because one is the international VIN number code for America, for those of you playing at home. And how's the back, Alan? What number is Australia, Woody? <coughs> six? Six, it is. isn't it? Yeah. It is, it is six. Well played, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, look, I got orange. No way, that was ridiculous. Get in the bin. It's like five minutes easy. Are we about to run out of fuel? Yeah, that's why I'm driving faster. <coughs> Scored a radiator then. What the hell is this? Maybe that's why it's so noisy. Are you going to put it in there with that? What are the rocks for? I don't know. Gardening? This one's just for mocking up. Well, it's for mock up and probably it'll end up with Jason. We'll just give it to him. That's gonna end up with a rock in it by the, by the look of that tray. Did you see what's in the, in the tray? No. Like boulders and Like shit. ballast. <laughs> Only mild rock damage. Hook me up for eyes. Isn't that the street machine car? Today on the Skid Factory, we're dyno tuning this street machine car. Bow, 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 bow. Went for a lunch run and a trip down to the wreckers. Found this old place that was dripping with rainbow water and cars piled to the roof. Uh, we got ourselves a V6 Commodore radiator just for the test fitting. Um, it's similar to this, but it doesn't have a cap. And the cap's fouling on the bonnet, so We'll just run with that. Uh, I've got a set of fans and that to go with it, just make sure it fits. So we'll throw that in and see how we go. Hey dog. That's gonna work, Al? Acres of them. Is it a miss is as good as a mile, isn't it? It is. Let's get this bonnet open now. Left hand side. This one just here. Yeah. Silly Americans putting shit on the wrong side. Benny would have to be able to get that undone with these left orium hands. What's up? Oh, they did the left orium thing. What's wrong with that? Who the hell's left handed? I don't see a problem here. I'm not left handed. 
Not with everything. <laughs> Did you like get a kick out of disrespecting a brand new G42? Yeah. You like that, don't you? It's not only disrespecting, it's repurposed. I can't help it if they make silly housings. That's true. Fits perfectly on a Scania. Even though it's a clean sheet turbo. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, bro. Hmm? I don't know how to turn it on. I thought you were just admiring stuff. So much cool shit. Why don't we get some of this stuff? I don't know. You can need a step ladder. I need something to stand on, bro. You're such a busy businessman, Benny. Trying to get everything done. Trying to get all sorts of things happening. Who was on the phone, Benny? Jason, that owns the Mustang, bro. Woody's filming me. Tell him, tell him I said hi. You can tell him yourself. Hi, Jason. Shall we dance? Uh, you like dancing? Sorry. Sure. You want to dance? No, okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
How long did you want it? <laughs> Was it 1.30? Yeah. You guys even know what you're doing? No, do you? No, I'm just holding the camera. Fire in the hole. No. How'd it go? It's like having a new toy on Christmas time or something. Hell yeah. A new squash your fingers off toy. <laughs> oh, oh Woody. So we've got Abe with us here. He's the, uh, the fabricator King Dingling. He's got all the cool tricks and tools. I've never seen this bit of equipment before, but now that I have seen it, I really want one. Good old chef to punch it the good it's a, thing. It's a punch. I thought it was a porter power before. Hole punch, 32 mil hole, straight through three mil alley. Also does sheet metal. What's it do, Miles? Deal up to? Uh, I, I've gone pretty far. I've cut bolts in half accidentally with it. <laughs> I've done alloy all the way up to four and a quarter inch. Big. Four and a quarter inch. Oh, holy you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Thick, come on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We've had what I would consider a pretty casual first day here, just planning things out, um, sorting out all the little things that you have to sort out before you start on the big things. So we got that radiator in there. Um, didn't know what we were going to do at the start. Came up with this VE idea. It fits absolutely perfectly in there. Um, minimal work to actually make it fit and it'll do the job really nicely. So we're stoked with that. Hoses should be easy. Um, we're gonna make a new top outlet here because we're not gonna use a thermostat or anything on this. We're just gonna have an outlet straight into the radiator. We'll put the filler on that outlet. So we've got a fill point and uh, we'll just block this little bleed thing off that's for the Commodore that we don't need. Um, and tomorrow, start on the cooler, do, we'll mount the cooler first and foremost, then we'll obviously work out from each end to do all of our cooler piping. Um, it's pretty complex on the, on the, well, on the right hand side of the car. If it was an Australian car, it'd be the driver's side. Uh, we kind of got a snake three inch pipe between an alternator and a chassis rail and a sway bar bracket. So it's a little bit complex to go sort of around there. Um, Originally, I'd actually thought about putting the cooler to the, the inlet and the outlet on the top side. Unfortunately, where the headlights are on this particular car, it's not going to work. So we put the cooler back to the sort of the standard configuration that you'd more or less see on most cars. Um, that'll, that'll actually allow us to run the piping a lot easier as well because we can just sort of shoot it out under the rail on this side and there's already actually a hole on the, well, the driver's side of this car that we can run it through. So it should be fairly straightforward. Lots of little technical stuff, but it's cooler piping, so it'll probably only take us about nine hours and we'll be sweet tomorrow. So we've got heaps of new toys here, so we're stoked. All these cool, fancy sheer gadgets. Sheer things that in sound in like they're going to kill you. Workshop. Press brakes and all this stuff, it's awesome. Good time. We're getting fancy. Onwards and upwards, back tomorrow. Back tomorrow. Let's get into it. Freestyle it, bro. Yeah. Beep it up, boop it up. Beep it up, boop it up. Peter, you can't speak. 